Hi everyone and welcome back to our physics movement uh, mini series we've done. Uh, in the first episode we've done a uh, basic movement. In this episode I wanted to show you how to jump in. So how to add an impulse to a ball and show a charge meter on it as well. So we can charge up a jump and do a big strong jump or a little weak jump if we want. So let's jump in and have a look. So previously in our physics movement we got our ball rolling around. Um, what we're going to do now is do a little jump. So I'm going to do it when I hold down the space bar and the length of time I hold down the space bar indicates how strong of a jump it should be. So, how to jump. Well, if we go to our player character, or in other words, the monkey ball, and in here we're going to add a jump key. So we've got a jump, as an action event already as part of the template, and I'm going to go and open it up and say on completed. So when we complete the jump uh, input, that's when we want it to fire. So to launch a physics based asset, you need to drag out the sphere asset, the primitive component, and you're going to add an impulse. And you do add impulse. And an impulse is like a flick. So you flick it up and down, wherever, whichever direction you want it to. So we're going to go completed onto add impulse. And the impulse here is going to be based upon the jump vector. Now I'm going to take in, first of all, just a hard number and then we'll make it more flexible with the elapsed seconds and triggered seconds. So let's go into the Z here and let's do, uh, actually let's split this open. Uh, Cause I want to do it by like a thousand, but I need to times the thousand by the mass. So let's get the sphere and get the mass of the object. And then we're going to multiply that by 1,000. And let's put that into the Z. So it goes straight up. Okay, so at the moment, there's no hold. It's just going to launch. Okay. And if I'm rolling, I push jump. The momentum is continuing on with the ball. So now to get it working for a held key. So we're going to go and edit the input action for the jump. So we can go third person input and we go to the actions and choose IA jump. And when you go in here, you'll see if you're using a template that it's going to come with two already applied actions on here. Uh, we can take these off. So we can remove those. Okay, and we're going to add our own trigger. We're going to add a hold trigger. And the hold trigger will fire after this amount of time. So this is when it auto fires, even if you hold down the key still. So we're gonna do two seconds as the maximum amount of time we can hold the key down for. And is one shot is we just want it to fire just once at the end. Okay, you don't want to fire it throughout. We just want to fire just then. And actuation threshold, this is the amount of time it needs to be held down for in order for it to get any result out of it. Okay. So let's close that. And on our jump, we put in the line now into triggered to trigger the impulse. The thing you'll see now is that when you're applying and you hold down the space bar, and I'm still holding it down, I haven't let go yet, it's going to auto fire the jump. Okay. But if I were to hold it down and let go before the two seconds up, nothing's going to happen. Now, the reason why that's happening is because for the hold release, uh, it only fires when it reaches two seconds. If it doesn't trigger, then it's going to be what we call cancelled. So I also want the cancelled to also fire off this impulse. And when I do that, I want to take into account the elapsed seconds. So I'm going to take the elapsed seconds and we're going to do uh, normalize range. And the range you're going for is 0 to 2. And they're going to multiply that by 1,000, which is our max strength. We'll put that into the bottom here. So we're taking this value to get between a normalized value between 0 and 1. If it's between 0 and 1, it makes it a lot easier to multiply. So you multiply it by 1,000, you get a nice scale, a slider scale between 0 and 1,000. We then multiply it by the mass to get the impulse we want. So, 
Let's take a look at that. Hold down the button. There we go. We get a little jump. Hold it down for longer. We get a bigger jump. And this also confer, uh, converts over to their movement as well. So if I'm rolling around and I would do, do, do the jump, we still get that momentum carrying on. Okay. So now we've got that shown there, let's put it onto the screen. Let's put a little widget on the screen that will be our jump bar. So we're going to go ahead and create a little widget blueprint. And we'll call this one W player HUD. Inside this, we're going to have a canvas panel. And inside that, we're going to have a progress bar. And I'll put that just below where the player ball will be, which is in the center of the screen here. So I'm going to put it in the center and then offset it down by a certain amount. Let's do 250. Change the size of it. We'll go to 300. Yeah, that do. Compile that. Save that. Right, so let's rename our progress bar. So I'm going to call it bar jump. And on the graph here, we're going to make this bar jump uh, appear and disappear based upon whether or not we're holding the key and also uh, change its value based upon what we're doing. So first of all is I want it to only do something if we are actually holding down the key. So to do that, I need to know when I've actually pushed the key. Okay, I need to know when this has started. So when we start doing this, we're going to call event dispatcher. Okay, on jump start. And I'm going to put that onto the started. And put that a call started. And we also need to know when jumps ended. So do on jump end. And that's going to go on cancelled and completed. Basically, over here. We do that there. Okay. So now that's got those two event dispatchers, they act as hooks for our widget. So let's go back to our widget. And first of all, we need to get hold of those hooks. So we're going to go into the construct, get player character, or get player pawn, sorry. And we're going to cast to our monkey ball. And with the monkey ball, we can drag out there and then we'll do uh, bind event on jump start. And also bind event jump end. Like so. So now let's create these events. So we create event. We call this one matching event. We'll do jump start. And do another one. Create event Whoop. jump end. Oh, let's go. Actually, click the button first. Create matching event and jump end. Okay, so there's our two hooked up with the hooks into these functions. And these will fire off now when we start and stop the jump. So in jump start, we're going to show the bar. So we get bar, set visibility, and make it visible. On jump end, we're going to make it hidden. And I want it to be hidden by default. So let's go back to the designer view. Go to my jump and change that to hidden. Like so. Okay, so now we've got the them showing and hiding. We now want to take to update the progress on it. Now, this has to be like a tick event or some kind of like delta based event or function because it needs to update regularly. So on the tick event, we're going to drag this out. And we're going to take out our bar jump and do set percent. Okay. But we don't want to do it the whole entire time. So what we're going to do is use a gate. 
Now, gates are really useful because that means we can stop it from doing code that is not necessary. Uh, we can open and close the gate. So when jump start happens, we're going to open the gate. And when jump end happens, we're going to close the gate. So nothing after this will happen unless the gate's been opened and it starts closed. So it gets to here. And now we need to get the percent coming out of here. So what I need is this normalized value. So I go back to monkey ball. I need this elapsed seconds normalized. So I need this value here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that as a variable and do jump held time. Plug that in. And that'll be going to ongoing. Now, this is ongoing because we want this value to keep changing and updating whilst the event has started. Not on triggered because triggers aren't going to fire until we release the key. So ongoing is going to happen. We're going to do jump held time. Go back to my player HUD. We're going to go to our cast up here. I'm just going to promote that to a variable so we've got a reference to it. And then down back on our percentage, I'm going to drag out my monkey ball, get the reference, and then get that jump held time. Like that. So that's one way you can do this. Another way you can do it, which may be a really nice way of doing it, especially if you're using the input enhanced input actions, is you can actually add those input actions now onto your uh, widgets. So if I do IA jump, I can put in my IA jump. And rather than doing this jump start, jump end, tick, and all this stuff, I can just use this on its own. So let's look at how we can convert this over to just this. So jump start is when we want started. So I'm going to take this and put that on started. Jump end is going to be over here when we cancel or complete the jump. The ongoing is going to change the percentage. So take that and put it ongoing. Now, what's really nice about enhanced impact actions is this won't override the one that's in our monkey ball. So I can do that. I can turn off my tick now. And you can see, I can actually turn all this off uh, after the bind. There, uh, before the bind, sorry. And now if I go back to the level, oh, we we'll actually add the UI to the screen first. That would actually help, wouldn't it? So let's go to our monkey ball. Nope, went past it. And we'll go and begin play. Create widget. Player HUD. And then add to viewport. So now the bar works on the screen as well. And when that bar reaches the end, it auto jumps. And that's really cool thing about enhanced input actions is that we can now combine uh, that with our UI to get some really easy to make things. We don't need these bindings, but you, as I say, you can do it this way if you want to do it this way. Uh, both work just the same, um, but we don't need to. We can get rid of this, get rid of that. Go back to the monkey ball. We can get rid of the uh, the calls here, different dispatches. You may still want them for something. I don't know what, but you may still want them for something. You can get rid of all that. And furthermore, we actually can get rid of the jump held time as well. Uh, so we can get rid of that. And get rid of that there. Uh, yep. Yeah. Go back to the player HUD. Because rather than using this jump held time, we can just get the elapsed seconds here and normalize that to the range. Between one, uh, zero and two. So we're doing all of that all within the widget, which makes it really nice and tidy and saves you a lot of work. But now we don't have to send that over to our character every time and let's just see if that still works as intended there you go it works perfect
So here's a little challenge for you. Uh, if you watch this video, we've done it as a jump. I want you to do a different input key to see if you can make it do a boost. So it works pretty much the same way, exactly the same way, in fact. It's just changing the direction of which way you're going. So have a crack at doing that and add a boost to your ball. So there you go. Um, have a crack at doing the challenge. See if you can make the ball have a boost that will push it forwards. And as I say, it works exactly the same way. You just think about the, the problem that you've got to solve here. Is all you've got to do is change the direction from going up to forwards. So have a crack at doing that. That'd be really cool to see people's reactions to that and see if you can make that work all on your own without any help. So I want to say a massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. If you like this video and want to see more content from me about physics movement, do let me know in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and like the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.